Hello, my name is Colin McNaughton. I'm a uh, technical marketing manager for Ansible Automation Platform here at Red Hat. And I've created a new learning track for ServiceNow Automation within Ansible Automation Platform. And this is made possible through a certified content collection called ServiceNow.ITSM. The collection is made available on Automation Hub at console.redhat.com. Now, each one of these uh, learning challenges follows the, the sort of same headings you see on the right-hand side. First, we'll introduce the concept. After that, we'll go ahead and run our automation. From there, let's inspect the results of our, the automation that we just ran. So let's get started with our introduction here. Um, an incident, which is the, the first thing we're, we'll be automating here, refers to an unplanned outage or reduction in quality of an IT service or an application. A service now implements technology mapped to, uh, to idle terminology and is accepted as an industry standard for incident management. So let's go ahead, let's move to our next heading here, which is actually the create incident. Um, uh, before doing that, let's actually take a look at the uh, the playbook here. So this one is commented pretty well, just to show which e what each line in this task is actually doing. First, go into the README. This is our password and username for the environment. This will um, allow me to log into the ServiceNow incident instance. So we go into ServiceNow, use that username and password. Looks good. Okay, created me a new demo user. Everything looks great. Here's my dashboard. Let's go back to the uh, to the the challenge here. So first thing we're going to do is actually executing this automation, right? So go over to Automation Controller. We'll log in as that student user. And again, the credentials were listed in that README file that comes up right as you launch this challenge. So first thing. We'll go over, um, we'll select under resources. We're looking for job templates. There's just one job template within this automation controller now, which is really nice. All I have to do is go ahead and launch it. Okay, everything is in this environment is already pre-configured, so we don't need to know, we don't need to create um, any inventories or credentials or anything, all of, all of that has been done for us. So it's really nice just to be able to cruise through this uh, this challenge and really understand exactly what the modules, um, what we can leverage these modules um, and this collection to do for us within a ServiceNow environment. So here, uh, creating an incident, it did just that, it spit out an incident number. Let's go and confirm within ServiceNow that that is the case. So we'll go to our next heading, which is inspect results, and we'll follow these instructions, which basically say, go back to service now select this star which represents the pre-configured favorites that I've set up for this environment select service self-service incidents and there it is there's that brand new service uh, brand new incident that we've created there's my unique username that will match in the from the readme so you know that this was created by me right now fantastic so let's go to the next challenge here Okay, so just like we created an incident, we can now leverage the problem module to create a new problem. Um, so this is what the this challenge is going through. We'll take a look first at the playbook problem attach. Um, what's nice about this is that we're already leveraging multiple multiple modules within this collection. So um, in order to create a new problem and associate it with our the, our created incident, what we first need to know is the incident number that we just created. So I'll leverage the incident info module. I'll look for um, sys created by contains my username. Uh, it'll return. It'll register that as a variable. Now I'm going to query out just the incident number because I like to keep things neat and we'll create a problem from that incident. Pretty simple. So let's go, let's close out the introduction um, and move into, uh, move into actually launching our automation. So go back to automation controller, resources, templates. There's a new job template, number two. Let's launch that. Now this is nice because it first queries for those incidents. Um, and that's, uh, that's in case there were multiple incidents created in the first step, if you wanna get crazy and mess around with the environment. Um, now uh, the problem that is created will reference multiple incidents. Um, that will, can definitely happen. So let's go back to ServiceNow. I believe we're going to be inspecting our results next. Yep. So let's go back to ServiceNow, take a look at our problems, and there's a new problem that was created.
Now you can see the website is completely down. That certainly sounds like a problem. So let's move on to the next challenge and see um, if we can introduce maybe a change request to address that problem. Okay, so here we are in the change request um, portion of the, of the learning track here. Um, a service now change is anything added, removed, or modified to address a problem that may be related to our past or ongoing incident, some sort of disruption within this environment. Um, let's move along. Let's take a look at the, uh, the playbook that was just created. So change attach. There it is. I'm finding the user created problems. Um, and then I'm creating a new new change request out of that problem and linking the two together. So let's go back to automation controller again to resources templates. There's number three for attached change requests. Let's launch it. First, it's going to go out and query all of those problems, um, and then uh, it'll attach a new change request to those problems. Now, the change request is hopefully something that will resolve that problem. Okay, looks like it completed. Uh, yep, there it is, completed successfully. You see a problem number down there. Um, let's go in and inspect the results. Great, this will take us back over to ServiceNow. Go to Open Change Requests. Um, I can use this, this will show all open change requests for the, for the time being, but what I can do is select this uh, natural language sort of query filter over here and say, created by me. Okay, and there's our change requests. It says reboot the re web server. That's definitely going to fix the problem with the website, right? Um, and just be sure, let's, uh, let's power off the entire rack. Um, but we're, we're, we're saying that this is currently on hold. So you, here's the on hold flag that we set. And we're holding because we should probably wait until after the board meeting to avoid any, uh, any disruption or embarrassment because I'm sure just power, powering off the entire rack uh, will get us what we want and not cause any embarrassment. So there it is. Our uh, change request was created there. Let's go on to the next challenge. Okay, so, so far we've really just talked about leveraging modules um, to, uh, to query and act on different uh, record types. But ServiceNow, there's a whole different part of that, which is the CMDB. A CMDB is a configuration management database, and it's a database that an organization uses to track all hardware and software assets. So Ansible Automation Platform is also able to leverage modules within this ServiceNow collection to both query and update configuration items within ServiceNow CMDB. So that's what we're doing here. For this one, we actually have two different playbooks. The first one is going to collect um, inventory facts on a, a couple of rel nodes that I've stood up within this environment for each individual account that logs in for this learning track. Now the second playbook is going to create or update configuration items um, uh, for those two specific nodes. So first what we'll probably want to do here is ensure that um, those nodes don't already exist in the CMDB. So we'll go over here um, in the filter navigator at the top left just type in Linux and then select Linux from under configuration and servers. There are only four here. That's great. That's what we expect. None of these are mine. These are all sort of demo um, entries here. Let's go back. Let's take a look at the next heading. Okay, so we're going to now launch this, uh, launch this automation. Now for this one, I actually included it in an automation workflow job template. So instead of having to uh, select multiple, both of those two different playbooks, one to query and one to update the CMDB, I combine them in a workflow job template. Let's go ahead and launch that. Now you see this sort of map here. This is a very basic map of just two nodes. The first node is going to query the inventory. Um, you can see um, in that pop-up there that it's running that collect node info, info playbook. And then updating... Uh, the update node is running that uh, create update config items playbook that we took, took a look at earlier. Okay, now it's finished. Let's go to our next heading, which is inspecting the results. It's going to take us back to ServiceNow. Let's refresh the page and hopefully, fantastic. There are two additional Linux nodes within this table now, node one and node two, and those are just the host names of the, the rel hosts that I've uh, created here. Um, I've also populated the IP addresses so you can see that this IP address should be separate from node 2. 
Yep, 161 versus 111. Um, now we can also, you know, populate a bunch of different uh, different uh, properties here, like host name or operating system version, OS service pack, DNS domain. Um, we can count up all the different, uh, the total amount of memory on this system and, and everything. So all of this, ServiceNow is extremely customizable and it's ensured to fit within any organization. And, and so these modules also fit into that. Highly configurable. Um, so let's go along to the next challenge here. Okay, so up to this point, we've created a lot of different record types, um, and we've done that through a few different modules. Now, what we can also do is now use these info modules to query all of these different record types and clean them up. So I've created a playbook in here called Close Records by User. And what we can do here is first create an array or a list of objects of all the different uh, incidents, problems, changes, and configuration items. So I'll do that in these first set of tasks. Then I'll pull out just the record numbers and when those records were created. And then I'll take those records and pass them into the, uh, the incident module, the problem module, the change request module, and the configuration item module to just go ahead and close them all out and clean up the environment. Um, so we'll go into the next heading here, which is going to take us back to automation controller, back to resources, job templates. We should have a number four, uh, I'm sorry, number five here, which is querying closed records by user. We'll launch that one. Then again, this is go just going to go ahead and query all different record types, pass them back into the modules to update or close them out. Amazing, incredible, unbelievable. So if we wanted to, we could go into details and start um, looking at you know, exactly what uh, change requests were, were closed out here. So I can inspect each one of these um, for instance, instance, if I wanted to check, take a look at the output of the, the query incident here, I could take a look at the JSON. Um, we could see that it found one incident and it was opened at this time. And so that's that kind of uh, list of objects that I'm passing into the later modules to go ahead and update and close out that specific incident. So let's take a look. Um, if I go back to ServiceNow here, um, if I hit this back button, it'll probably, yep, those two nodes that I had added in here have already disappeared. I can go into the incidents I've created. There's nothing here. Problems assigned to me, nothing here. And change requests will have also been closed if I do the created by me natural language filter. Change requests are all gone. So great. Uh, what we've just done there is queried multiple records of multiple record types and updated them all. Okay, so we've kind of talked it through the modules that we can use to query records, create and update records. We've also talked about configuration items within the CMDB. Now we can create those, those items, but we can also use the CMDB as a source of inventory for Ansible Automation Platform. So imagine being able to return all of your Windows and Linux servers, um, group them by manufacturer, pull out information from the CMDB and use that information to connect and automate those boxes. And that's what we're going to be doing here. Within this collection, there's also a dynamic inventory script that we can leverage here. So let's go into the review of inventories. First, let's go over to Automation Controller and see what is already here. Let's take a look at all available hosts, no hosts found. Now that's pretty expected. Um, the, the integration between Ansible Automation Platform and ServiceNow is an API to API integration. So I'm just hitting the ServiceNow API. There's no real um, inventory there um, that I'm operating on when I'm just creating new incidents and problems and things like that. What I have done already is pre-populated a new inventory to leverage this inventory script and then go out and query ServiceNow and pull back new hosts. Um, to, to import into Ansible Automation Platform. So take a look at ServiceNow Inventory. The Hosts tab is empty, predictably. So let's go ahead and sync the, the hosts. So on the next heading, it says we're going to select the Sync Now button. And this is running that, uh, that dynamic inventory script that I'm sourcing from the ServiceNow ITSM collection. And it's using that um, along with a query so here's the query I'm actually running here. It's going to group hosts by manufacturer where the operating system of that host includes either Red Hat Linux or Windows XP. That sync has successfully completed. Let's go back to the hosts tab. And now I see a whole host of hosts. 
um, including those four Linux servers that uh, that we saw earlier. And that makes sense because I'm looking here for um, instances of, uh, of configuration items within the CMDB whose operating system is Red Hat Linux. So I can also go back out and take a look at all hosts within my environment. And now you can see all these different um, all these different hosts that were returned by this ServiceNow inventory sync. So not only can I uh, use ServiceNow, uh, not only can I you know, create new record types within my automation, say I have a patching window opened up, I'm going to go ahead and update all of my Windows boxes. At the same time, I also want to create a new incident within ServiceNow to log each one of those host names, what inventory I'm operating on, all the different patches that are going to be applied. Um, if everything is successful within that maintenance window or patching window, I'm going to go ahead and close out that incident and say it was closed because because the patching window was successfully applied. Um, not only can we do things like that, but we can also um, query the CMDB. We can also modify the CMDB, um, if all from Ansible Automation Platform. Um, but that is it for this learning track. We're all finished here. This uh, environment will be torn down automatically, and the service now uh, user account that was set up for us is being deleted. Thank you very much.